Yo, it's Popman, coolest in the game, you dig? Rise or Freeze, the best show in the city, the county, the jails, the fucking flea market, the uh, the, 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 the dude on the corner that's selling Jamaican food, the best the best show in Fells Point. Food? You never mean about Jamaican food? He got the little truck out there, he got the beef patties. But it's better than that? Yeah, my it's show is better than that. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> so yeah, rise and freeze you did coolest in the game. I did the long intro and that motherfucker fat. That might have been the sign of a chill, but joining me right here. Um, um I won't say social. Social is very dismissive. Comrade, you know what I'm saying? Of course City College is on. I never knew she was this funny until she showed niggas that she was this funny. Nakia Hampton, you go by a different name? You go no. by a stage name, just Nakia? Yeah. Cool, cool. It's just good, me. good to see you. You know what I'm saying? Um Yo, what like comedy, like that that's you the you the you the Don. What's poppin'? What, like, you feel me? Like yo, what, when did this comedy thing happen? And and real quick, can you talk about your transition to the other side of the world? Because I didn't know you went to the other side of the world until like two years ago. Yeah. But just talk about your, your transition at the high school. Um, after high school, that was a long time ago. You well, I went to college. I went to college here. I went to University of Baltimore. Okay. And then I moved to Seattle because I was dating this guy at the time mm. who was giving, getting his PhD at the University of Washington. Okay. And, um, and I wanted to leave. Like, you know, I was born and raised here. So yeah. I just kind of wanted to get another, just see how life was without everything that I grew up with mm -hmm. and everything that I already knew. So mm -hmm. I was just like, all right, like, let me just go out there. <laughs> <laughs> just go out there and mm -hmm. see what I could do like by myself. Right, right, right. So, so that brought me out there. It was, it was it is it always a scary transition? Because I've tried, I've definitely moved to Virginia briefly and it wasn't scary. I just almost died. So. Uh, what? <laughs> it wasn't scary but you almost died. Okay. The dying part wasn't scary. The, 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 the transition it was scary. Oh, shit. I can't go call my homeboy when I need to yeah. or I gotta, I'm by myself in this. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it definitely was scary. I mm -hmm. think the thing that motivated me the most was just like, I just wanted to see what life could be like by mm -hmm. myself. So okay. I was over there. The only person I knew was him. Um, mm -hmm. But then that made me want to go even harder, like meet some friends yeah, and meet some, yeah, you know, yeah. family and people that I could consider my community since I was so far away. Okay. Um, okay. It's not a lot of black people in Seattle. And so when I got there, I was like looking for them, like with a flashlight in the daytime. <laughs> no, I was really on Twitter, like searching like black people in Seattle, like just trying <laughs> to get like locations. And I actually messaged this girl who was, she, it must have been like a line that we meet each other because I sent her a message. I saw her location and I was like, hey girl, I just moved here. Is there any, like, what black it's people probably, at like yeah. and she sent me to this whole community via slack you know what slack is the yep. app it's like a um it's kind of like group me but mm -hmm. from like work and organization okay. stuff okay and basically it was uh, all the people who had transplanted from other places move into seattle mm -hmm. black people mm -hmm. um and events and like let's meet each other yeah, let's get to know yeah. each other and so that's how i got into the black people <laughs> in seattle <laughs> and it made it easier because had i not met them like mm -hmm. it would have been very tough to just just be i dig it yeah i dig it i dig it i dig it i dig it once you started doing that like you kind of started making friends you kind of started just feeling feeling around and stuff are you still with the guy that you No, know? we broke oh, up wow. we broke up while i was living over there we broke up because i was living out there for almost four years okay we were together for like two years then we broke up and then um i stayed out there because i had a job and you know my friends was out there and it wasn't time to come back yet yeah. um but after we broke up that's when i decided to start doing comedy because mm. I was just like, well, you know, I don't have nothing else to lose. And, you know, I just wanted to, my goal was just to do one open mic and that just mm -hmm. be what it was for the year. Mm -hmm. um, and it just ended up being so much more than that. But my mom, my mom was a comedian. My uncle is a comedian. Oh, so it's okay. just part of my family. Oh, wow. And it was kind of like a repressed gene. Like yeah, I always knew yeah. that I could do it, but I just didn't want to for a while. And then I just wanted it to be my own yeah, thing like yeah. i didn't want to have to like live in their footsteps yeah. and like you know have to tell me what to do. Yeah, right yeah. so i was just like well let me just try it on my own time and, and yeah, so it's probably see. just them probably just knowing how to communicate with people because yeah. when that. i was younger i my grandmother used to put us in all types of like programs and stuff so mm -hmm. and then i grew up in church so i used to do a lot of altar prayers so okay, i used to have okay. to like talk in front of people i was in girl scouts right, for like yeah. most of my life so okay. we always was presenting and I was just always talking in front of people. 
Um, became second nature. Yeah. yeah. So I already had the the point where I had stage presence, but I just had to put the jokes with it, and I've been right. had jokes. Right, so right. I've been just, had jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been had them in the yeah. bag. I just ain't never have nowhere to to express, express them. them. So. I, uh, I just interviewed Sir Marcus, and he was telling me how he had like stage fright one of his first times because he he had tailor made jokes for black people, but his mm -hmm. audience was full of white people, mm -hmm. and like he didn't alter it, so he just like went up there and just bombed. Like a five minute set, he only lasts like forty five seconds. Oh, <laughs> have you ever dealt with something like that before? Um, I don't necessarily like tailor my jokes. Like I know okay. there are certain jokes that a specific crowd is going to get mm -hmm. but for the most part i just go up there and like my stance is always my stance so if i'm talking about race and i'm talking about race and there's mm -hmm. white people there and they laugh or they don't and i don't yeah, really care because it's yeah. more like i just need to say it anyway yeah. um but i have been in positions where the crowd didn't understand me and it wasn't that i didn't think that i was funny but just they probably just didn't know where i was coming from okay. and that don't i i would never get off early unless it was like real real bad and that hasn't happened yet i'm not saying that it won't happen yeah. but i've never been in a position where i was just like oh i can't take it no more yeah. like i'm gonna just ride it out and if yeah. they don't they're not feeling it some at least one person out there is yeah. so I feel like, I feel like. <laughs> So yeah. So what was so when uh what with this when was that decision that you made to say all right this is what I'm gonna do after like the open mic after that one open mic when it, when it kind of clicked for you like all right cool let me keep going. Well, so the first time I did it, I actually um when I was living in Seattle, there was a comedy club right up the street from my house, and I was on their website, and I wanted to um because I was gonna buy tickets to see Hannibal Buress. Okay. And then I saw that they had a class, and I was like, oh okay. Well, this class and it was like it was very, not expensive at all sometimes comedy clubs and they be charging a lot but this wasn't wasn't and then you got to have a show at the end so i was like well this oh, just okay. takes you know my whole thing of just doing that one open mic this can you yeah. know satisfy that plus i get to meet some new people mm -hmm. and i get to meet the people at this club okay, okay. so i did the thing had a show it was amazing everybody was like girl you're so good like you gotta just keep doing it you gotta just keep doing it and mm -hmm. and i ended up making friends with the people at the club so after I was done, I was like, all right, well, do what I need to do. But they would call me and be like, hey, you want to do this? So mm -hmm. we got this thing. So I ended up getting, like, my first paid show, like, a little bit over a month after I did the open mic. Oh, wow. And she's like, hey, we got a certain amount of money for you if you want to come down here and do okay. 15 minutes. Okay. And at the time, I had only did five. But I wasn't going to say no. I was just like, all right, well, let me get 10 more minutes and, yeah. and figure it out from there. So so how was that first paid performance? It was cool. It was. Yeah. It's funny because it was for... Um, it was like a college show okay. so it was like a lot of uh college age white guys in there mm -hmm. and they laughed but it was uh it, i don't know it was it was cool okay. i think if had it been more women in there i would probably would have felt more comfortable okay um because okay. i was just like how do i make these guys laugh like they are like the opposite of me yeah. young and white and male <laughs> um so i just like had a bunch of college references that they enjoyed and it was pretty good okay yeah that's dope that's dope that's dope do you like, get people that kind of like ask you for advice or tell you like kind of like share their experiences with you about like how nerve wracking it is sometimes or or how good it is uh like when they it's do it or yeah yeah people people do that a lot but i i just don't like i from what i've been through in my life i know that everything that's for me is for me so mm. i think what people say with a grain of salt because a lot of times people be trying to project things onto you so you know you'll say you want to do something and people be like well i tried it and it didn't work for me and it's like <laughs> okay like <laughs> that's your life like yeah. you know we two different people so yeah. I just take it with a grain of salt. I know some sometimes people just talk because they want to be heard, and I'll <laughs> yeah. listen. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, that's nice. Yeah, yeah I'm glad that you tried. <laughs> but like, you know, and you don't do like social media comedy, like uh, like Ha Ha Davis or stuff like that. You mainly just keep it stand up. Yeah, okay. I like doing stand up, and sometimes I'll post, um, I'll post like some of my videos. Yeah. But um, I don't really, I don't make skits like that yet. I want to eventually, yeah. but I'm definitely, I'm just more focus on stand-up because I like how it helps me
communicate with people and mm -hmm. I like how it helps me like write my jokes. So okay, cool. I just like yeah, to do it so, in front of live people. So the process in, in creating jokes, I always wondered, like I always wanted to ask like Chris Rock and and, and Eddie Murphy. That's like when they prepare for a, a show, like you you guys actually write your jokes down, do you practice them? Do you like or do you have your own style or do you kinda of follow a format that was taught to you? So I most of my jokes come from like things that I witness. So like if I watch something I'll be like, hmm, that was kinda of funny, but it'd be funnier if this happened. I'll just like mm. exaggerate or I'll be on the phone with my friends and they tell me some crazy shit and then I'm like, yo, this, you know, and I'll just take it literally from my conversation and do it on stage. Yeah. Um, and so I don't, sometimes I'll physically write it. Like if I think about saying, it, I'm like, oh shit, this is funny. I got, yeah. I'll like put it in my phone, but it's not like a full complete thought. It's okay. just like this, this, that. But then after I do it on stage, I'll go back and write it out okay. and then add some stuff or take some stuff away okay. where it's actually like written down yeah. somewhere or like a Google drive or something like that. So, mm -hmm. so, so I've also heard as well as about like seasoned comedians having like writers and people that kind of help tailor their jokes. Mm -hmm. and help write. Do you consider that like, um, do you consider maybe doing that in the future like, when your brand grows? I say it knows something if. But when your brand grows, like, <laughs> do you plan on kind of having people come in and, and assist you with writing jokes or assist you with that where you kind of feel like, I'm the captain? I guess. Well, I would like that. And I think yeah. it would just have to be, like, from a similar perspective that I already mm. have. Or even if like Easter um, Ray, maybe. Yeah, okay. or just, you know, well, my friends, they actually help me write a lot of jokes. Like, they don't Shout know it friends. at the time, yeah. but, like, <laughs> we'll have conversations and I'll take it and be like, oh, okay, like, this yeah. is something that, you know, yeah. I want to keep using. So, and and sometimes they do, they will give me jokes or, like, a funny concept and okay. I'll go from there. So, I can definitely see that being a thing. Whereas, mm. like, I even maybe form a team yeah, and then we yeah, just do it all together. Um, because, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm a very collaborative person. I don't mm. think that I can do everything by myself and and when it gets to the point where I do need a team and like you know I'm mm -hmm. definitely down to like source that out and, and make it right mm -hmm. and also get other people paid. How has your, your, your journey as a comedian helped like your business sense as far as how you deal with promoters deal with just your money and stuff like that? So it's funny because mm -hmm. like I don't it's just me and well now that I'm back home I have a lot of help from my mom and my uncle okay. and stuff so I can't even say that it's just me anymore, but um, I'll just, you know, I, I try to use discernment. Like, I've been in a situation where I worked with a guy and I did the show for free because I was just starting out and mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I want the time, I want the experience, you know, it'll be fun. And he was so stupid that he, because we went out afterwards and he was so dumb that he talked about how much money he made off the show in front of me. Like, I wasn't going to be like, oh, okay, so like, where am I cut at? Because most of the people that came was my friends or people that knew me. And so he ended up being like a really creepy person anyway. Like yeah. other people that had worked with him was just like, uh, we tried to stay clear of him. So <laughs> after that, I just try to use my discernment and if, and I'm not at the point anymore. Like, even when I started, I wasn't like, I'm going to do every show. It's, it's comedians that do that. They're like, oh, if they want to book me, I'm going to do it no matter what. But because I'm a woman and I'm young, I just have to be more careful about it. Okay, like, yeah, I'm not going to yeah. travel very far by myself or, yeah. you know, if it's like, you know, sketchy or if anything don't seem right, I'm just like, no, nah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd rather just create my own thing than, you know, Fine wait. The hustle. Right. I'll be trying to look on the gram as much as I can. Do you, you've had your own show? Mm -hmm. Okay, how was that? Yeah. yeah. So, I I did it in Seattle, which was amazing. Okay. And it was, it was nice because ever since I started, um, when I was doing comedy in Seattle, the scene was very white. Of mm. course, like, I mean, the city is very white, yeah, but there yeah, are yeah. black people that exist there and they do like comedy. So when I started doing it, I was just like, yo, it'd be nice if we could like have a black room mm. and not just be like black people at, in a white space, but like this be our space. Mm. And if they want to come, they can, you know, enjoy it as yeah. well. And so that was had always been in, um, in my head since I started. And I reconnected with um, one of my mentors who I met when I moved out there and he owns a black owned space. Um, in Seattle called The Union, which is yeah, really cool. Okay. You can check it out on Instagram and all that stuff. Um, and as soon as I walked in, I was like, this is the spot. And I've had <laughs> other people say that to me, like mm -hmm. just to be, you know, down and like, I respect what you're doing. If you want to have a show here, mm -hmm. you can like literally like volunteer that space to me, but once I walked in the union, I was like, no, this is yeah, the spot. Yeah, it just like, hit you. You'll yeah. Know that, and then it was <laughs> black owned, you know, all black people. It just was right. And right. so we did that and I was so scared because I only had like three weeks to like promote it 
Um, and of course, everybody ain't buying tickets to like the last week. Yeah, so it'd be nerve wracking. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, no, I kept refreshing the event right there. Like, nobody's coming. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they came and it was packed and mm -hmm. it was beautiful and I think and people still talking about it now um, and I'm gonna go back to Seattle and do it again probably yeah. in the spring um, the but I like that. I like thank that. you I like but that. it was just one of those things that had just been in my head like it just has to be done and it don't yeah. have to be perfect and I don't have to wait mm -hmm. until somebody tell me that I could do it I just gotta get it done yeah. and then you having those relationships you already have an equality period so just your relationships and just your hustle. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean? Exactly. It just literally all came together hella easy. Like mm -hmm. I didn't really have to do much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just like flowed. So. Yeah, yeah. So so like are we? I know in the soon in the future, like you probably gonna do your own stand up, like your own your own delirious or your own. Uh, like what's it? Laughing my pain and all that mm -hmm. shit. Okay. Like a special. Yeah, it was fun. Man. Like you gonna holler at Netflix. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> when they come right. out at me. Hey man, what's up? Or even million. Amazon, cause they yeah, be Amazon having... Prime is booming yeah. now. They just did like a Rihanna documentary. Yeah. Like no one. Mm -hmm. it. It's money out here. No, it's, it really it's, is. You know what I mean? And yeah, for me, it's just like I just, I just do it because I feel like I have to like it's it's mm. a way for me to honor my ancestors because they done it like it, mm -hmm. it obviously flows in my family mm -hmm. but um also just because like I want to inspire other people who may feel like they didn't have a voice or yeah. they want to be heard or they want yeah. other people to understand their perspective so when that kind of stuff happens it, it happens I'm not in a rush mm -hmm. um because I want it to be good yeah, <laughs> like, I want it to that's be right. like legit mm -hmm. um but that is something that i'm, I'm thinking about that will probably happen man that's gonna happen because I, I ain't gonna lie like i thought your instagram name was like your your, your stage name like, yeah that's kind of fire right? <laughs> yeah fire. well see i i didn't want to have a stage name because mm. it was it's just me yeah, yeah like okay, petty okay. betty is also me but like she's like crazier than oh, I am. Yeah, okay, like, right. she's... That's one of the girlfriend's side? Yeah, like, she is, like, she's off the hook. And, so, like, Patty Betty will say some stuff that, like, I would say. Oh, man. But, um, when I got started, I wanted it to just be, just be me. I okay. feel like when you have stage names, sometimes you have to live up to it. And I, and, I, and I really feel like, like, you get this. Like, yeah, that's what you yeah, get. Yeah. So, I, thought, I thought Jamie Foxx was that man's name. I know. It's like Eric Bishop or something like that. Yeah. Okay. See, Eric. Right. That's ugly name. And I also think my name is kind of cool. So I yeah. just, if I had like a weird ass name, I probably would. Be okay. Like a okay. Stage I dig name. that. I dig that. <laughs> but so I like I, my name. So. I dig, so I know you got a show here coming up. All right, cool. Yes. Tell people about it before we get out. I have a show um, next Thursday mm -hmm. at the Crown. It's called Club Out of Town Comedy, um, mm. and it's gonna be three other women there, mm. uh, four other women, I believe, mm -hmm. and it's free. So like, the 19th, you just right? come, yeah, Thursday okay, the nineteenth cool. at the Crown, and then um, I'm having a New Year's Eve party oh, at um, Happy Hour Heaven in Fells Point. It's okay. a black-owned restaurant and bar. It's actually right down the street, right down that corner. Um, and yeah, so. It's popping. Come through. <laughs> Free's got the free ticket, so it's all gravy. <laughs> you did. You can I appreciate you coming through. Anything you want to, social media, all that, you want to holler at? You know what I mean? um, yeah, I'm on Instagram at Petty Betty, P E D D Y B E T C Y. And then I'm on Twitter at Muffy Crosswire. Um, I remember with that three name. S. I remember that name. <laughs> yeah. I remember that Twitter name. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because like, I was on Twitter in 2011, mm -hmm. and then I took a break from like 20. 12 to like 2015 like mm -hmm. i missed like a good like five years on uh twitter but mm -hmm. i'm back now and it's fun so last thing for somebody who who wants to not even just be a comedian or, or do what i do or be a ball player or rapper or whatever anybody that's like trying to get in and they're trying to find their niche but they feel like it's not happening for them like what would you happen for them the way they think it is what advice would you give to them um, I would just tell, I would tell any person that if they really feel it in their heart, like it needs to be done and just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Cause it's just, it's really just about timing oh. and having oh. patience. And if you are doing it for the right reasons, it's going to happen for yeah, you. Absolutely. Like if you, if you really want to uplift people or, mm -hmm. you know, just inspire people, then all it takes is time. But if you want to do it just because you want to be famous or you just well, whatever the reason is it still yeah. may happen for you but I feel like when people have that real passion and that real desire in their heart to like maybe 
you know, create change in the world or whatever the case may be, then yeah. just keep doing it because yeah. it's more about you anyway. Yeah. At least that's how I feel. Like I yeah. do stand up because like I feel like I have to. Like yeah. I and if I didn't, where would I put these thoughts and all these jokes that I just have yeah. them not in just my on notebook? Social media for free. Yeah, right. <laughs> like it does not like actually be using mm -hmm. my voice, which is one of you know the gifts that I was given. Absolutely. So Absolutely. then you know just just keep doing it. You dig? Hey man, you heard it first, second, and third. Nikia Hampton, you did. Young Petty Betty. <laughs> Thank Rise you. Rise Freeze, you know what I'm saying? Of course. We didn't even go nowhere. I thought, I thought we was about to be riding. Uh, I thought we was going to yeah, get this some the food. It's the rain, it's the insurance. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, like, you know, I'm building it up. So, you know, God willing, soon, I got some sponsorships coming. I'm gonna have different camera angles. And all yeah, that. that's awesome. But, you know, I you know love it. Cause this yeah, guy always doing some good stuff for the oh, community man. and you appreciate always it. uplifting people. That's it's awesome. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. you know what I mean? You know, yeah. much love. It's all genuine. You know, Rise with Freeze, the best show in the city, the county, Milford Mill, Randallstown, <laughs> Dunbar, Essex, you know what I'm saying? Even in Seattle with Frasier at. You found know saying? All these things you dig. Mm -hmm. Holla. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yo, wait, no, I got it, I got it. Right. Yo, 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 it's Nakia, aka Petty Betty, you with Young Freeze, Ooh. and uh, we riding. We not really riding, but like we riding in our mind. <laughs> so yeah, check us out. <laughs> Much love, you dig. <laughs>